Recently, I've been feeling kind of out of it, like my brain is stuck in a fog. It's been a few years since I've been out of school, and nowadays I spend most of my time doom scrolling social media and playing video games. I just think I'm not stimulating my brain enough, you know what I mean? Now, some of you are probably saying I should get out more, or try therapy, or hell, even go back to school. But no, 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 I have a much better solution. I think I need to play a 20 year old Nintendo DS game for a month straight. sounded better in my head. Brain Age, Train Your Brain in Minutes a Day is an experimental video game with a bold promise. A promise that by playing it for just a little bit each day, you could positively affect the health of your brain. It is primarily centered around the studies of Japanese neuroscientist Ryuta Kawashima. Kawashima is renowned for his brain science research, most notably for his findings regarding brain imaging. Once refining their ability to scan the brain, Kawashima began experimenting with how different tasks may affect it. The hope was that their research could facilitate a way for children to learn more effectively, slow the aging of the brain in the elderly, or even help rehabilitate those with dementia. Kawashima developed a theory that by performing simple math problems, completing puzzles, or reading out loud each day, you can improve your mental clarity and potentially even slow the mental effects of aging. Kawashima published his findings in a book titled Train Your Brain, which featured math questions, memory games, and counting tests. The idea was that the reader would perform these tasks each day, time themselves, and eventually start to see improvement. Train Your Brain was a huge success in Japan, selling over 2 million copies. And eventually, the book would make its way to the desk of a man who I am sure you are all very familiar with, Satoru Iwata, the then president of Nintendo. At the time, Nintendo was looking into developing games that could appeal to more casual gamers. They wanted to push the boundaries of what a game could be, and hopefully, even entice brand new gamers into the space. And of course, ensure those brand new gamers would be entering the space on Nintendo platforms. Iwata felt Train Your Brain could be a perfect match, and after a long process of trying to pin down the very busy scientist, Kawashima finally agreed to meet. It just so happened that the day he chose was the very same day the Nintendo DS was launching in Japan. But clearly Iwata felt strongly about this vision, because yes, he actually agreed to a meeting on the day of a new console release. After a long conversation between the two, the decision was made to move forward with development, and Brain Age was born. Well, actually it was called Brain Training in Japan, and was released a full year before other regions. It even received a sequel just a few months later, which performed extremely well. Following the success of the series in Japan, and Nintendo's previously mentioned push for wider audience appeal, they chose to bring Brain Age over to the West in April 2006. This brings us to the game itself, and my goal for this video. Today I want to put Kawashima's findings to the test. If I play Brain Age every single day for a month, what kind of changes will I see? Will my scores improve significantly? Will my healthier brain make it easier to focus in my day-to-day -day life? Or will I waste a month playing an outdated video game instead of actually bettering myself in any meaningful way? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out, but first, we need a baseline. To start, we'll need to complete the Brain Age check, which gives us an appropriately titled Brain Age. This is essentially the game's ranking system to track your progress, and wow, this first day did not instill a ton of confidence. My brain age is 66. Alright, so we've got some work to do. Getting a brain age that is over 40 years older than my actual age was a bit concerning, but hey, that's why we're doing this challenge, I guess. To start off, we have three of them. The first was calculations, with two variations of solving 20 and 100 math problems as fast as possible. Math was never my strong suit, and it was showing here. There was also this memory game, which I think is similar to the one they give to literal monkeys, so hopefully I'll be able to figure this one out. And finally, there is the reading aloud mode, which I was actually very happy to see was a thing because I've been telling myself I need to read more. On day two, we unlocked syllable count, which is pretty self-explanatory. It asks you to count the syllables of different phrases. Apparently, I was paying attention when we learned about these in school because I had this one down pretty easily from the start. On the third day, another new mode unlocked called Head Counter, a memory game where people would enter and exit a house at increasing speeds, and you had to keep track of how many were left 
left at the end. It was here that I found my first instance of a problem we'll see occurring several times throughout this adventure, which is that the game can sometimes misread what you write. No! How is that a 7? This was one of the biggest complaints Brain Age received from critics at the time, and yeah, it's pretty frustrating to get something wrong because of this, even more so since I am trying to track my progress. Over the next several days, I felt myself instantly getting better, especially at the math games. I think I just needed a little refresher to get back into it since I'm not often doing these kinds of math problems in my daily life anymore. On day 9, I unlocked hard mode for head counter, and it was definitely a whole lot harder. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do with the hard mode since it's going to make the progress halt and the charts will be out of whack. In the end, I decided to stick with hard mode for head counter since I already did it once, but not play hard mode for anything else to keep the progress steady. On day 15, I unlocked Time Lapse, which has you calculating the time between two different clocks. This was truly one of the most humbling experiences of my life. I don't spend a whole lot of time looking at analog clocks these days, and I quickly found out I have completely forgotten how to read them. On day 20, I unlocked another new mode, this one titled Voice Calculation. Unfortunately, my very totally legitimate DS doesn't have a working microphone, so I didn't include it as part of the challenge. It's the exact same as calculations except you say it out loud instead of writing it with the stylus. I'm assuming they added this to show off the DS microphone feature. And while I would have loved to experience it each day, if there was any mode we were going to miss out on, I'm glad it was this one since it's not all that different. As the days continued on, I found myself getting a bit tired of this. I feel like you can see it on my face that the monotony was starting to get to me. There just weren't quite enough games to keep this feeling fresh and fun for the whole month, although I guess that's expecting a bit much out of a DS game from 2005. Thankfully though, the month was coming close to an end, and soon enough, we had made it to the final days. Now it was time for the big moment. It was time to take the Brain Age check again and see what kind of improvement, if any, I made. Well, there you have it. After a full month of playing every single day, I was able to cut my brain age down by more than half all the way down to 30. In terms of the individual game modes, we can look at the monthly charts to see what kind of progress was made. Overall, I would say there is decent improvement across the board, specifically with the math and logic based game modes. The memory games are a bit more all over the place, but that's not all too surprising. All it takes is losing focus for half a second to miss something and get a question wrong, leading to more unpredictable scores. So let's get to the main question of this video. Did playing Brain Age for the past month actually make me smarter? Well, I guess that depends on what you consider getting smarter to actually mean. As we saw from Kawashima's research, these brain games are meant to strengthen the health of your brain. This is not necessarily the same as making you smarter in a traditional sense, but I do think it's fair to say a healthier brain will be in a better position to learn and subsequently become smarter. As for my problems with focus and feeling present, I'm not sure this experiment really helped there. It didn't end up translating over to other things like my product productivity in the way I hoped it would. If anything, my productivity got worse because I was now spending an extra 20 minutes a day playing video games. But at the very least, it was a good refresher into skills that I learned at some point in school but may not continue to use very often. And hey, if you consider remembering how to read an analog clock as getting smarter, then this challenge was a smashing success. Now, I've been kind of satirical throughout this video, but it is important to point out that Brain Age never claimed to make you smarter. In fact, Nintendo stressed on multiple occasions that this was just an entertainment product, albeit one based on scientific research. And for those who are curious, there have been some much smarter individuals than myself who have tested the effectiveness of Brain Age. Many experiments have been done over the years with a pretty wide range of results. In 2008, BBC News reported on a Scottish study involving over 
600 school children. A select group of the students would play Brain Age for 20 minutes at the start of class for 9 weeks. At the end, it was found that the children who had played Brain Age improved their scores by 50% more than those who did not. And it was found that the students playing Brain Age were completing their tests faster. However, a similar study from Times Online in 2009 found that children who had played Brain Age did not show much different improvement from those who were working with pencil and paper or just going to school normally. Either way, I think Brain Age deserves credit for making an educational product fun. Any game that can get children or 24-year-old brain-rotted YouTubers to have fun doing math for extended periods of time is doing something right. Whether it is effective from a medical or scientific standpoint is kind of irrelevant if it's getting kids to practice their multiplication tables. And I think we can all agree that doing these brain games can't hurt, and are certainly better than doing nothing. I also think Brain Age deserves credit for kickstarting Nintendo's experimental era, which led to their highly successful Wii and DS line of consoles. And while Wii Sports or Wii Fit typically take the credit, Brain Age was actually one of their first games released within this initiative. And I'm willing to bet even Nintendo was surprised by how well it went. The two Brain Age games on DS sold over 30 million copies combined, a staggering number for a game that almost never even left Japan out of fear that no one would want it. It seems reasonable to say that Brain Age's success played a big part in pushing Nintendo further down this path. Maybe some of the more lifestyle-driven games games that defined the company for so many years would have never happened if not for this game right here. And I think that's pretty dang cool, even if it didn't actually make me smarter.